So, uh, like Holly was saying, I'm a woodworker. I make uh, epoxy wood charcuterie boards and just other various home goods. Um, but the I guess like the reason I am qualified to tell you guys about art festivals and being a vendor at art festivals is because I've done probably over 30 art festivals in the last three to four years. Um, So yeah, I've been in all sizes of art festivals, which we'll get into the different kinds and other aspects of it. But um, yeah, let's see. So yeah, different types of art festivals. There are juried art shows, which is kind of like the big one that a lot of you are probably, that's kind of what you have in mind when you think of an art festival is a juried art show. Um, these ones has, like it sounds, there's a jury of fellow artists that review your work and decide if you're a good fit for that art festival. And um, a lot of times there are also like awards that go along with that too. I don't pay a lot of attention to that because I'm there to sell stuff. <laughs> Not so much for the awards, but if that's your thing, that's cool. Um And then there are craft fairs and art markets. This is a little bit smaller scale um, thing. It's, you can find them all over. And then lastly, there's pop-ups. This is kind of a, kind of like it sounds, it's kind of a last minute sort of small business pop-up situation. I'll get into it more in, the, in a minute here. Um, Who should participate in art festivals um, without saying everyone, <laughs> um, everyone should, but um, more specifically, nonprofits and art organizations are welcome. I see them at lots of art festivals, but especially artists, um, creators, makers of all kinds, um, basically anyone that has something to sell or offer to the public. Um, it doesn't sound like we have anyone here currently that doesn't like that has doesn't have a physical object that they make um but if you are like a musician you can still participate in art festivals in creative ways i've seen um musicians at art festivals selling their cds and merch and things like that just getting creative with what you have um to offer to people but Basically, you just want to keep in mind that you have something to offer, even if you are a nonprofit or arts organization, um, having something there to offer to the public is important to keep everyone engaged because um, it seems people are more drawn to something that they can take home rather than coming to your booth and just getting a business card. Um, But having good conversation and being a friendly face is nice too. So, oh, and also dogs, as you can see, my dog Murphy is right there. Um, if you have a dog you want to bring with, they they bring in all the crowds. <laughs> it, maybe not the right crowds. You get a lot of people just petting the dog and not looking at the art, but <laughs> it's start hanging things from his collar. <laughs> yeah, right. Look at our stuff, <laughs> but. Um, so like, what is the cost of getting involved in these art festivals? Um, it kind of varies depending on the type of art festival you do. So we'll start with the juried art shows. Like I said, those are kind of like the bigger art shows, the ones that you are um, going to send an application in for, and there will be a set of jurors that look at your work and your application to decide if you're a good fit for that art show. Um, typically, and all these numbers are pretty, uh, broad, but I kind of just set up what I've seen seems to be the average. Uh, so like $200 plus for a juried show is kind of what you can keep in mind. Um, but that doesn't include the juror and application fee, um, which can range from 10 to $45. So that's a little add-on that you have to consider when you are just applying for the show. Uh, it's kind of a bummer that it's that way because um, making art and being an artist is a lot in itself, but it's just something you have to consider if you think that going down the art festival route is will fit with your, um, your work. 
Uh, and then for pop-ups, so pop-ups you'll find mostly at like, like say a brewery or a local business, they'll have a pop-up like um, just market of local vendors of all sorts. Like it could be like artists like us, but it could also be uh, food vendors. Um, and these typically range between $50 to $150, usually no juror fee. or application fee there might be some kind of application process but typically i've found with pop-ups you kind of just like you'll see an advertisement on like social media or something just message them and they're like cool you're in and it's like sweet that was way easier than applying for an art show um and then lastly craft fairs and art markets um these kind of vary uh a lot so the price range is free to a hundred dollars so there's a big range there um but and obviously no juror or application fee so this is kind of like it's similar to a pop-up but these are kind of the things that like happen um annually or seasonally or weekly type things um and they can vary in price and then So like, this picture I'm sorry to interrupt. So like, could you give an example of like one of those that you attended? Yeah. That Yeah, ball? so I guess I'll talk about like the different shows I've attended that fit within each of these. So the juried shows, like I've attended the Uptown Art Fair down in Minneapolis, uh, Bayfront, uh, Art in Bayfront Park is one. Um, but then for pop-ups, Um, so like this picture you see at the bottom, that was a pop-up. So you can see like my setup was pretty small. I just brought a few items because I'm not going to bring my full booth setup that you'll see later on. Um, and that was at the depot downtown in Duluth, uh, just for random. They had, um, let's see, there's that cruise ship that came in that was coming into town. It was for the passengers on that cruise ship. It was kind of a weird random thing that they decided to last minute put up. Um, you'll see a lot of like breweries and things like that host pop-ups. I know like Duluth Studio Market, they do pop-ups. Um, and a lot, so you'll see like small businesses will host a pop-up just to draw more attention to their business and kind of engage with the community. Um, craft fairs and art markets, my best example of this one um, is probably like Festival by the Lake, just because it wasn't a juried art show. It's, it was at Bayfront, but um, it it was just, it's just a, hey, you want to do this? Send us like <laughs> your information and pay for it and you're in kind of thing. Um, so that's a good one, Festival by the Lake. If It's kind of a secret, like, um, <laughs> if you know about it, you know about it and get in. And it usually has a nice turnout. So if you guys are interested in traveling to Duluth for that one. Um, but moving on. So how do I find and apply for these um, various places? Like, I'll start with the um, smaller ones. So for pop-ups and craft fairs. Typically, like I said, local businesses, so galleries, breweries, other small businesses, libraries, parks, and churches will host pop-ups and craft fairs. Um, I have found it to be very, um, like they tend to advertise these things on their social, social media. So if you're not really into social media, I would get on their newsletters, or if you happen to see like a yard sign that is advertising a craft fair and you're interested in it like being a vendor at that craft fair I would just attend it find out who's running it and get their email so just kind of boots on the ground kind of work if you're really scouring for that and then once you actually get involved you'll talk to more people and kind of find more um, opportunities from there but Uh, one of my favorite places to look for juried art festivals is Zapplication. Um, so that's Z-A-P-P-L-I-C-A-T-I-O-N dot org. Um, this is where a majority of um, 
juried art shows have their applications and I'll click on it right now so we can kind of look at the site together. Um, and if we have time towards the end, I can kind of show you guys like my account to show you my portfolio and everything that I have in there, but we'll see how much time we have. Um, so this is where um, a lot of the art shows will have their applications, basic kind of general system, just make a account and sign up for it. And this has uh, events like all over the US. So you can search by your state. It's gonna wanna load. Um, so we'll look at the Minnesota ones quick. Um, and you can see it kind of has all the dates, deadlines, and all that stuff listed out. And this is just where you'll hold all of your information for applying to these shows. So it's super nice because it saves like all your artist statements, portfolio photos, all that stuff. And it, this is how I found a lot of the art fairs that I've gone or I've participated in because I can just look at the event dates and look at my calendar and see if these work for me and just start applying to them. The only bummer is they all have like application fees and they're not always cheap. So um, it's just something you might have to plan for. Like I said, if, if you're going down this route, um, we can come back to this too, because I know it's kind of an important aspect, but uh, moving on, so dates and deadlines. Um, so a lot of these festivals take place in the summer. So the application deadlines are typically in March or early spring. So March and April, maybe May. Um, so like now is the time you really want to be like looking and getting all your materials um, ready to apply. Um, and we'll go through all that in a little bit. But um, if you are applying for like the fall and winter festivals, I would look probably in the um, summer for that. So you kind of look the season ahead for the next season's set of festivals um, to start applying, especially for the juried ones. The pop-ups and the like craft fairs can be more of a like last minute thing, depending on the show. Um, so it all just depends on how you work. I really like the juried flow of things minus the cost of them. <laughs> I just like, I like that they kind of plan everything out ahead of time so I can see like how my summer is stacking up and it's not so last minute. And then I can make a bunch of stuff and be prepared. You pay for the right. flow. <laughs> what is that? I said you pay for the flow. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All the planning. <laughs> All right, so what is in a good application? Um, so we'll start out with your portfolio. Uh, if you haven't kind of explored in the world of creating your own portfolio before, um, I think a good starting point to just have on hand is like eight to 10 photos of your work. Uh, so when you're looking at your stuff, just pick your best work and your most unique work. Um, Make sure when you're taking these photos to have good lighting, a simple background, um, and then also keeping in mind the type of festival you're applying to and make sure it fits in with the vibe. <laughs> so if it's like a Duluth festival, I'll probably pick like, for example, these coasters I have on here um, that would fit in with the Duluth vibes because it's very like superior-y, I guess. Um, so, and then also looking at this photo, uh, you can see I just have a like very simple background, good lighting. Um, I took this one inside my house, but I, uh, I didn't have any special lights or any fancy camera. I just opened up all the windows <laughs> in the middle of the day, made sure I had a bunch of lighting or a bunch of natural light. Um, and then that background, the marble background is just uh, one of those, um, like sticky tabletop stickers for refinishing your table tables. I don't know what those are called, but you know, you guys know what I'm talking about. <laughs> the ones you can get at Menards. Um, I think they're like six or eight bucks. So it's nice 
just super simple way. And I don't even stick it to anything. I just roll it out when I need it and then roll it up when it's when I'm done using it. Um, another good option is to just find some kind of plain piece of wood and go outside and get some nice lighting outside. Um, and then also for the juried shows, you'll need a booth photo. So in the middle here is an example of my booth photo. Um, same kind of principle applies to this uh, with the good lighting and a like straight on angle, kind of can see everything. Um, and yeah, so I think if you, that's kind of a issue with, uh, with applying to a juried show is like, what if I've never done a show before and I don't have a booth photo? Um, if you've done like a craft fair and you have a photo of your table at a craft fair, I would just use that. Anything you have to show that you have a setup of some sort is kind of what they're looking for. Um, and we'll get into more details on how to uh, set up your booth and make a nice booth too in a little bit. Um, and um, can I interject one thing here? Sure. Um, Pinterest has so many wonderful little tutorials or step-by-step -step things about ways that you can photograph and things that you can use in your home or how to make your own light box or all kinds of ideas. So if you just go to them and it's like, how do I, I mean, it's so much yeah. <laughs> photography of that. So if you're looking for different ideas, you can go there too. Yeah. Pinterest has a lot of good photography tips and they also, I've noticed they have, um, they'll have like photos of different booth displays too. So if you're looking for some inspiration mm -hmm. besides mine, <laughs> you can go there. Um, so yeah, moving on to like an artist statement. If you've never written an artist statement, this is kind of like your who, what, why, when, where, <laughs> all of the information about you. Uh, but it's a little different, I feel, for um, for art shows. Artist statements are a little different than a typical artist statement that you would like have up at a like gallery or something. Um, so they're typically shorter, so keep it short. And like, if, um, I was looking earlier at what my shortest uh, like character count that we were allowed in a juried show, because they have character counts that you're allowed to submit for artist statements. And the shortest one I had was 100 characters. So that's like a sentence. Um, so Because can, characters include the space. Yeah, so each space and every, yeah, each so the character count, like, and I was thinking that might have been a mistake, but I still made it into that show, so. That's an I elevator. Work speech, in one right? sentence, apparently. <laughs> um, so yeah, keep it short, keep it pretty simple, kind of just explain, like, um, like what you do, kind of what your process is and the thought process is behind your work. And uh, make sure when you're writing this, make it editable, editable. <laughs> so it can be edited to fit into those different size, uh, word or character requirements. Um, and then try to make it reflect your like personality and your brand. So if you want to have like a fun peppy brand, make sure it, it shows in that way um, by having an upbeat, I guess tone of voice in your writing um let's see so and then lastly this is not like necessary uh for for like every application especially like in this application they don't always like have this option but um having a website or some kind of social media of your work is helpful because a lot of times they'll have an optional portion where uh, you can like input your website or your social social media handles. Um, and this is just an opportunity to show off more of your work without actually submitting more than the required five or six photos that they want. Um, so yeah, if you have the ability, create a simple website or post more photos on your social media. Um, 
And a quick little tip about websites, um, and we'll talk about it a little later too, um, getting one of those square readers. So it's a, it's, um, I don't have access to it right now, but it's a little, I don't know if you guys haven't seen them, <laughs> they're little card readers that plug into your phone and it's called a square reader and they're super handy. You can get it for free, but the, um, company also has like the option for making websites too through them it just will have unless you pay for a domain it'll just have that um their domain added on to whatever you call your website um but yeah i use the square website it's super handy super simple and Is it square um, or square space? square square okay square space is yep. different okay. square space is different yeah so um, the only thing with the square card reader, it's super nice because you can set up like all your, um, all of your item, your merchandise items and everything in, in the app and stuff. But uh, it does take a, I can't, a percentage. Uh, so it has a fee, which is a bummer, but it's kind of the payoff of getting a free card reader. Um, and I can't remember what the percentage is, but it's it's not like super significant Let's see all right now we're into the preparing step portion uh, um for an art fair so like what do we need how do we even get ready for this um it's called all kind of daunting so i kind of tried to lay it out in like different categories um so we'll start with the products. So like your um, products that you will be bringing to the art fair. Um, so pretty much at every art fair, you want to prep more than you think you're going to need. So like make as much as you can without like hating yourself. <laughs> uh, so pick things that you can make a lot of. Um, bring a few specialized items if you can. So in this photo here, I have some examples. So the keychains were kind of created as something that we could make a lot of. And um, it was an item that a lot of people can afford. Uh, so keeping that in mind to bring items that range in price. So um, try to have at least one item that the general public can afford. And I know not afford is kind of a who knows what anyone can afford. Uh, but the keychains were something that happened because we went to an art fair that uh, required everyone to have an item under $20, I think, and our keychains are $10. So it's super nice because people will come up to our booth and they'll be like, I really like you and I like your work, but I just can't afford your work right now. And it's like, no shame, but then they'll buy a keychain because they like us for us. Um, I did it. Just want to yeah, <laughs> they just want to support and posters. us in some way. <laughs> yeah, posters are a good one too. <laughs> um, and then also, if it applies to your work, bring forms to take custom orders or to like take orders later on, or if you need to get customers' information in some way just hop on Google Docs, just make a form that says name, uh, email, phone, and notes or something, and print a bunch of those off just to have so you can take people's info down if you do take custom orders. Um, and so typically at the shows that I go to, I bring um, like our basic sized cutting boards and then we'll bring some special items that uh, we maybe haven't brought to an art fair before or we just feel like being creative because when you are in the the busyness of summer art shows you don't really get a lot of opportunity to branch out and be creative anymore so uh, you can see in this photo i have these I'm pointing at it like you guys can see where my fingers are. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
So down here we have these, they're, they're called our snack trays. And we made this because we wanted little trays that we could sit on the couch and eat snacks out. <laughs> and it was just a random thing. We probably didn't have time to make it, but it was a random idea and it like got our creative juices flowing and it was a nice refresher to just be creative and not just make the stuff we normally make. And we brought it to an art show expecting to not sell it and we ended up selling it right away like immediately so then we realized okay this can be like a normal product of ours so doing stuff like that just keeps you feeling fresh and um also like helps you branch out and like test to see if new products will work at an art show and so materials um, make a list of materials you'll need to bring. Here's a start. So a uh, shopping bag, so just those brown paper bags are great to have to uh, when people are checking out uh, to give them to take home. Um, price tags of some sort, this can be done in the simplest ways. Uh, it can just literally just be printer paper if that's all you have, but having something um wrapping paper so if you have items that can be damaged easily having something to wrap them in is very helpful and then i cannot stress this enough i don't know what you're going to need it for but you're going to need tape <laughs> for whatever reason you're going to need a lot of tape and i mean the like heavy duty packing tape you're going to need it for something um so make sure to bring tape. We go through tons of it for some reason. I don't even know what we use it for, but. <laughs> I was just going to ask. I was like masking tape, <laughs> duct tape. Yeah. Like, like packing. packing tape. And it's good for like good. wrapping stuff. I don't know. Things like fall apart and you just need to tape it up for some reason. But yeah, so tape is handy. Uh, pens, bring lots of pens because like I said, you might be taking down people's information. Even if it's just fellow artists information, it's good to have. Um, informational signage. So this is all your like um, whatever your business name is or however you want to display yourself. Um, and then also if you do take custom orders, having a sign that says we take custom orders or on our checkout desk, we have all the um, payment options listed. So that's another idea for signage. Um, next one, business cards. Bring a lot of business cards and bring extra if you can. Um, don't worry about getting fancy business cards. If you want to be creative, you can. But um, we go through business cards like crazy. So we just get cheap ones. Where do you um, source them from? Is Vistaprint still a thing? Yeah, actually, I think that's where we get our business cards from, Vistaprint. Um, yeah. Uh, I've got them in the past, and you can get some really nice quality for pretty cheap. Yeah, they have, they actually, Vistaprint actually has good quality, and they always have sales, so I highly recommend. And I would also recommend, because I pick up a lot of business cards in my travels of artists, and to have something that represents the type of art you do or a photograph of your art or something, because I know I'll look at it later and I'm like, I can't remember what yeah. they, you know, do or so yeah. that's nice for those of us who are like, why do I have this card? Yeah, exactly. All right. And then like I was talking about earlier, if you have one, a square reader or just getting your Venmo or some other type of uh, like digital way of payment is very common now and kind of necessary um, getting that set up and ready uh, change for cash um, so that was a big mistake I made on like one of my first art art shows was oh yeah people still do pay in cash and I want people to pay in cash so I need to have change for that so that was a thing um, so, and in terms of amounts, I think we usually try to keep like $120-ish, ranging in different types of bills in our cash box. Um, and then going on to that, have some kind of cash box or bag 
Um, we just have one of those metal cash box, um, like a metal cash box. And but I've seen people with the like fanny pack cash bags. Those are pretty handy, especially if you want it on you. I see like the need for that, especially if you're going to be by yourself. All right. All right, now talking about displays. So um, planning your booth display, uh, generally keep it pretty simple and clean. Uh, you don't want too many extra like decorations kind of distracting from your work, um, but also being creative with your, your booth display draws customers in. Um, so you can see in this photo, I have, um, in our display, we have these three walls. So one wall is longer than all the others, and that's kind of the main wall. The other two are smaller, and they can all be moved and um, arranged in different ways, depending on what where we're placed in the art show. Um, yeah, so trying to think about, like, functionality, um, because you'll... You don't know where you're going to be placed in an art show. Um, and then a nice tip too is to draw up how you want to set up your booth beforehand. So just on a piece of paper, just kind of practice um, laying it out and then having that plan ready before you go to set it up at the actual show. And finally, um, set up. Uh, don't forget about set up and tear down because it's a very time consuming process that can get very heated and stressful. So I know it's like my most stressful time where I get kind of crabby. Try not to, but it just is. Um, so like I was saying before, try to create a plan, review your booth display plan. You'll typically get some instructions for how to load in and load out for the the festival itself. So make sure you read through that so it's not so hectic and scary when you're driving into a place that maybe you haven't really experienced before. If you can, bring a buddy because it's way like more helpful to just have someone there if you need to go to the bathroom or something. Typically, uh, art festivals do have booth sitters that'll come and sit at your booth for you if you do have to go to the bathroom. But it's nice to have someone you know that knows how to run your card reader and all that stuff um, if you do need to go take a lunch break or take a walk or something. Um, remember to include sales tax in all of your planning because that's just something that can be easily forgotten and sales tax is different in each city you go to. Um, well, typically it might be the same in some, but so just try to be mindful of that when you're including that. And there is an option in the square, on the square site with the square reader to include sales tax. Um, and then try to arrive at least two hours early. And some art fairs will have like time frames that you can arrive or that you have to be there. Uh, so keeping all that in mind. Um, but yeah, two hours early until you have a good system down and you can get it done in like a half hour. Some people are really good, but I still try to go like two hours early because like I said, it can be stressful. There's a lot of people. Um, so a lot of art fairs will have you drop your display off before you set up. So just keep that in mind also that you might want to make sure your um, all your things are organized in like totes or bags of some sort um, because they might want you to drive in drop off all your stuff and then drive away and park and then come back and set up. Um, make sure you take your time. Like I said, it's stressful. <laughs> so just take your time, try to breathe, um, set up your tent first, then evaluate what to do next. Cause your tent set up, just having your tent set up will kind of get your base of like your, your, your area of what you have to work with. Um, make sure you drink water, especially in the summer. <laughs> don't want to pass out. Um, and then make sure you say hi to your neighbors. That's how I've met some of my best like artist friends uh, is just by saying hi as I'm loading in and setting up. You'll meet some of the nicest people ever. And it's just good to have people people on your side when you're when you're 
especially alone selling things and they can keep an eye on your booth if you need to walk away or something. So it's good to, to make friends with your neighbors.